Hey, this is Jason Roselle, and welcome to Get Inspired, the official podcast and YouTube show that will empower your mind, body, business, social media branding, relationships, and anything that's holding you back from becoming the best version of you. Listen, before I became a TV personality, an author, a celebrity trainer, a life and wellness coach, and the founder of Caliente Fitness, I was broke obese for 20 plus years, full of stretch marks, full of excuses, and most importantly, here's the deal. I was unhappy. I was able to change my life completely, and since then, I've helped thousands do the same. This show is gonna bring you awesome guests, tons of helpful programs that'll aid you, but most importantly, your questions and topics that will make this show your show. My question is this. Are you ready to get inspired? Well, get ready, because the show starts now. Now, when people ask me, hey, Jason, how are you feeling? I'm like, well, hello, I'm feeling caliente. But lately, when people ask me, how are you really feeling? I'm like, well, I'm feeling pretty iconic. And the reason why I've been drinking and using iconic protein on a daily for a hot minute. And if you're watching or if you're listening while you're driving, don't get too excited because today I have the founder of Iconic Protein that you know I've been talking about on Twitter, on Instagram, the list goes on. His name is Billy Bosch. What is up, Billy? Thank you, my man. What an intro. I love it. And and what I love is that we got connected just because I saw you tagging our products, drinking all the time. I'm like, man, this guy loves Iconic and he understands what we're doing here. And so we started talking on social and got connected. And I feel like it's been a few years now. Um, and then here we are talking on the podcast, but I love it, man. You've, you've been a great brand ambassador. And th- this is to be clear to everyone, this is not even a paid endorsement. This is just like, oh. you love the product, which I genuinely appreciate. Swear to you, uh, 95% and people know this cause I'm very transparent, whether it's Facebook where we have over half a million followers, whether it's Instagram, 95% of the things that I promote is a, I have to love them. B. I get paid. Why? Because this is part of my job, right? (laughs) I've been doing this for many years. There's a very few products such as Iconic Protein that I can truly say has helped me and many of my clients. And when I say help me and many of my clients, which I'll get into a little deeper in a minute, I will say that Iconic Protein has the most natural, easy to read ingredients that if you have any kind of gut issues. The older we get, you know, and I'm in my 40s, hey, you know what? The engine needs a little cleaning. You just can't put it the regular STP oil anymore. You need that (laughs) goody good. And especially me, I was fat for many years. This has no sugars. I mean, what are we looking at here? Uh, Three grams of fat, 20 grams of protein, only nine grams of carbs, 140 calories. Guys, I'm not kidding. I'm, I swear again, I'm not getting paid. Please try this. And I'm going to talk to Billy to give exclusively my listeners and my viewers a special discount. Is that fair enough? You got it, man. We're going to make it happen. Because because right now people may be checking, checking this episode out and saying, oh, th- these guys are trying to sell me. I'm, I swear I'm not trying to sell you. This is why I was so inclined to interview Billy. Which now I hope he's ready because he's on the hot seat. We're gonna ask Billy. All right. I want and I want you to be honest here. Okay. Hit me. Hit me. If you could have any superpower, right? Or maybe you have one right now. What would that superpower be? Or what is it? And be give it to me straight. Hmm. You know, I think about this often uh, because it's a question that comes up here and there in life. And, uh, and, and it kind of changes. I would say right now, if I could have any superpower, it would be to see into the future, okay? Because I could make so many meaningful changes in my life, in my business. Uh, it's just like the vision, right? Because it'd be cool to fly. It'd be cool to see through, through, see through things, all these other, other things out there. But to be able to understand and see what's going to happen in the future. And for me, I'm a, I'm a take action kind of guy. You're a take action kind of guy. So I feel like I would be empowered to take action upon this information. 
would you say it's kind of like the movie, uh, what was it, Back to the Future Part 2 when, when MJ Fox literally opened up the almanac, right? And he's like, yeah. oh, my God, this is, yeah. with that, is that okay, cool. So I'm Yeah, just- I get the almanac. I can see what's happening. And, and for me, it's like part of, part of my life is around, centered around longevity and health and wellness. Because oh, why do you want to live forever? You just like love yourself and love being alive. Well, I, of course, I, I love that. But for me, it's like how can I generate the most impact? by being on this planet for a long period of time and a really healthy and functional state. So it's like, if I can understand what's going to happen in the future, that's part of the reason why I want to stay around in the the first place is just so I can see what's going to happen and help be an impact on, on these events. Let me ask you for anyone that's checking out the show right now, what would you answer to someone that say suffers from major anxiety, right? That the thought of them looking into the future whether it be good or bad, like, what do you tell someone? Because you seem obviously very balanced. I don't know if you've ever dealt with anxiety. I know I have, and yeah. you know, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. When, when I've dealt with anxiety and anxiety can be crippling when you're running a business. Okay. Because every day it's a new stress every day. Uh, you know, if you go home, you have a significant other or a family member. Oh, how, how, how was your day? How, how was my day? It was good. It was good. No, no, no. Tell me how your day was. Well, let's see. We almost went out of business. We almost got sued. We can't run production. We can't do this. Someone discontinued us. This happened. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Is, is everything be, this, is, this is daily. This is what happens every day. And there's ups and there's downs, right? But there's a lot of downs and the downs are super deep. So for me, what's been core in dealing with anxiety and stress is waking up in the morning, not getting on my phone, doing a 10-minute meditation, Okay, doing 10 minutes of journaling, writing what I'm grateful for, getting my thoughts out, processing that and spending 10 minutes learning something. So that's my 10, 10, 10 to start the day. And then I go to the gym, right? I go to the gym. That's like my my mantra in the morning. It's like go through, go through everything, go through my thoughts. Like I, when I'm focused in the gym, as you know, like I got to make sure the weights don't fall on me so I can clear my head. Right. It's not like I'm constantly thinking the whole time. And then I start my day and I feel like I could run through a wall. I like it. I yeah. do something almost ex- almost identical to you. The only difference is I um, have you read the book, Think Rich, Grow Rich? Yes. Yes. So as you know, it's similar to manifestations. I just talk a little bit, you know, when I meditate or after I meditate of what specifically I'm wanting out of that day. And I mm. ask myself, why? Mm, that's good. Right? Why am I actually doing it? Because mm. anybody can say, well, I have to go to work out. I got to do this. But why? What is yeah. it going to do for me? And obviously, this is where you and I match right here mentally. It's for my future. Right? Yeah. I can't predict a future like the almanac, but mm-hmm. I can create it. Right? Mm-hmm. It, may like not, it may not be exactly how you and I pictured it. I know, example, the love of my life, my girlfriend, she's definitely not like what I thought or how I was going to meet her. It ended up being better. Mm. (laughs) Right? Just saying. Or like, you know, when when people get pissed off and you know this as one of the, I mean, you truly are a great entrepreneur. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. When people say, oh man, that sucks. I didn't get the opportunity, you, you know, like that vague saying, when one door closes, another one opens. Totally. It's usually a much bigger, freaking awesome location. Yes. <laughs> it's, I swear. It's so, but again, it takes one to know one, right? Yeah. yeah. We're on the same vibrational wavelength right here, you and mm-hmm. I. So we're yeah. understanding, like you're probably getting goosebumps like I am just thinking about it. Because we are manifestors, but to mm-hmm. be a manifester, you have to be what? A doer. Yes. Yeah. You got to go out and make it happen. And I was going to say that would be another great superpower is manifestation, being able to manifest anything you want. But you made a great point. What actually comes out of that mental manifestation in reality is sometimes different than what we think it will be. And a lot of times it's better than what we think it will be. Mm-hmm. So if you could just sit there and think up things and they, they exist you may not be optimizing in life, right? Sometimes the unexpected that, that comes about is such an amazing thing in life. 110%. Um, let the audience know, because a lot of, right now people are glued in 
on what we're mm-hmm. talking about, which is great. And that's yeah. what this show is all about. It's about getting inspired. But I want to really ask you about your break, uh, sorry, your background and how Iconic truly came to life. And when I say that, because Iconic Protein, whether it's um, the the pre-made uh, protein uh, liquid or the powders that you sell, these are mm-hmm. available nationwide, correct? Yeah. yeah. Whether it's Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, we're talking hundreds of your favorite stores nationwide. So people are like, they need to know. Tell us a little bit, uh, kind of like a flash forward of your background, where you're from, how you got the idea of Iconic, or maybe you had three or four ideas previous to that failed. And then mm-hmm. how long did it take you for this to actually hit? And where are you now and where, where you want to be? God, that was a mouthful. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> it, I know. Take your time. We're here. Take walk, walk me through a bowl. And thanks for the acknowledgement on the distribution. For me, it's, it's still an amazing uh, reflection point to walk into a, a store nationwide like Whole Foods in any city I go to and to see Iconic on the shelf with other protein drinks. And it's just it, it's still a little bit surprising. Uh, but like really gratifying to see that, like that never gets old for me. And we're still working on Trader Joe's. We're not there yet, but customer requests help there. Uh, we're in some Walmart stores nationwide. We sell online, of course, uh, a bunch of other stores out there. But, you know, to, to answer your question on where it started, uh, it started in New Orleans. I lived in New Orleans. I'm from Louisiana and uh, was in New Orleans for about 10 years. And I have an uncommon background. Um, a lot of these people in food and beverage, they, they start with a natural food background. Uh, in, in some way, shape, or form. For me, not so much. I was in oil and gas. That's kind of the main industry down in the South, uh, especially in Louisiana. And I you know, learned a lot about consumer products in that industry, but I knew it wasn't for me. You know, it, it didn't feel like, I just didn't know what else I wanted to do, I'm trying to make a living. And what I found was that in my constant traveling for that job, I had really, really compounding health issues, right? So I'm, I'm working out once or twice a day, feeling like I'm in great shape, but I was eating a really unhealthy diet. I'm eating a lot of fried food. I'm eating Italian food all the time, heavy, heavy carbs, uh, you know, eating, you know, big steaks and all this stuff, eating fat food every day. And just because I'm on the road, right? Oh, I'll, I'll be fine. As long as you, that, that's the fallacy, right? I'm sure clients will oh, talk yeah. to you about this. Oh, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Jason and I work out. I can, I can go eat the cheeseburger. Okay. I'm not saying to never have a cheeseburger again, but you can't have, you can't have them every day. Okay. <laughs> and the, the working out doesn't always offset this. So that was my, my struggle. And I go to uh, a physician and they say, Hey, here's a couple prescriptions for your high cholesterol and chronic acid reflux. Just take these every day. What? That's crazy. Why? I'm in my twenties and I'm going to take pills every day. Why would I do that? So I went to a dietitian and she says, look, food is the problem, but it can actually be the solution. You need more protein and fiber, lower carbs, lower sugar to clean up your diet. Okay, got it. Protein drink. Cool. What about these protein drinks out there? Rattle off all these brands. No, they're going to give you cancer. They're going to give you diabetes. Okay, but those seem like, like pretty bad things. We don't want those, right? And so I said, okay, what do we do? And I said, you know what? Why don't you help me create a drink if there's really nothing else out there? So I don't know who you are. Who are you again? <laughs> How hard can this be? And, and look, while I was at Shell, I started a couple businesses, just, you know, side hustles, right? On the weekends, at night, I had a, a business where we started for fun, just kind of throwing a, a New Year's Eve party in New Orleans every year. Started out with mostly our friends. Five, six, seven, eight years later, uh, grew to 2,000 people. So that helped feed fund this business when I had the idea. And then I started buying real estate when I got out of college with one of my best friends. Uh, we kept growing that portfolio. He, he runs that company really well. Uh, but that continues to grow. And then this was kind of the third thing. And so we, we sunsetted this, this New Year's party, put the money into Iconic. And I started Iconic with really just an idea for a product that would be a clean protein drink, serve as a mini meal replacement during the day, a snack, something like that, and just have clean ingredients, right? I mean, I'm sure you've seen the struggle, right? All the products out there, so many dirty ingredients, right? hundred percent. There's too much of it or it's hidden. That's the problem. Yeah. 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 It's hidden. So it's like, we didn't want to have a dirty little secret because all these drinks, it was like, you would look at it. And so this drink is good, but aspartame and sucralose linked to cancer. Don't want those. Okay. Look at this. Okay, good. But like, look at all the sugar in here. Don't want diabetes. Okay. 
And so for us, it's, it's been really important to have zero sugar and 100% of our products and always sweeten with a little bit of monk fruit and stevia, which are natural, uh, more flavors and sweeteners, but it provides a little bit of sweetness. And that's been at the core of our, the, the thesis behind the brain is how can we eat, create really tasty products that are absolutely delicious that people can use during the day to stay full uh, and not have like a bunch of junk in their products. So it's been 10 years. So over the course of 10 years, uh, I give all the credit to my team because it's like, you can't do this without great people, as you know. You got to have great people in your business and you have to have the vision for what it's going to be and be able to change along the way. Uh, so, you know, where we're at now is we've got uh, a little over 5,000 distribution points, different retail partners around the U.S. We sell online on our website, drinkiconic.com. We sell on Amazon and we're still growing into new product lines and new stores uh, every, every day, every month, every year. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me ask you this. When you created this, and I think you answered me, but I just, to, I like to bring clarity to, to audiences because we totally. all interpret things differently. Right. I can say, Billy got bit by a dog and that can give you a feeling poor Billy. Mm -hmm. Or I can say the dog got bit by Billy. Everyone's like, damn, Billy, totally different feeling, right? Really crazy. <laughs> right. It's really crazy. It's yeah. talking about life and perception. So I want to make clear when you created this amazing product, was it for money or was it to help yourself and people? Because a lot of times people do it for money. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I did it for money, uh, I'd have a, a, a bank vault full of cash right now. Uh, but unfortunately, I did not. Uh, I really started it out of passion. And for me, I'm, I'm kind of a sales and marketing guy uh, at, at, at the core. I've always just enjoyed like talking about products, introducing people to products, helping to solve problems. I think that's what sales is. At the end of the day, you're like helping people solve problems versus like push. Because I always say like our product is not for everybody. Okay. Not everybody that's listening to this should should buy and drink our product. Okay, you should look at it. If you're interested, give it a try. Um, and for those that it is a good fit for, you're gonna love it. But mm -hmm. for me, it's like, how can I solve these problems for people? How how can I, especially in Louisiana? Louisiana's tough, man. The food's delicious there, but everything's fried and covered in cream sauce, right? Or it's fried and covered in powdered sugar, like those delicious beignets. Yeah, <laughs> so it's yeah, like, yeah. How, <laughs> how how can I create something delicious? You know, everything in Louisiana is a high bar set for taste. But you walk around, you walk around the U.S., 80% of the U.S. is obese, okay? So people have weight problems. There's a weight problem. There's an obesity epidemic in the U.S. How can I help be a solution for that? I don't expect everybody to go spend two hours in the gym every day and eat, you know, carrots and, you know, wild-caught salmon every day, okay? I know that's not possible for everyone. So how can I create convenient products that help solve the problem? That was my initial thought. And then it's kind of turned into a business, started out more of a, as a passion project. And then I said, okay, like we need money to run this. Eventually we need to be profitable. So then you get into the nitty gritty of the financials and, and financial modeling and how to grow the business and all that. That's awesome. And then that's what I tell people. And I, again, I'll speak to you on a different occasion because I've obviously not every one of my listeners are business owners or yeah. want to start. But for those yeah. that are out there, you know, we, you and I may have even a follow up episode in the near future where people are really hungry to understand, well, okay, you said 10 years, Billy. It's been 10 years. Yeah. You have a team. You were very thankful for that team. Mm -hmm. This is where people really are curious. Well, yeah. Okay, tell us about the first year. Oh, that big flop you had in 2008. What, you know, but I don't want to make True. the whole episode about that. Is there any things so we can move on to the next category for you that you would yeah. say for all my business um, type of clients, entrepreneurs out there that, you know, are, are, are new or even someone like me that, you know, I do good, but I'm, I'm, I'm green when it comes to products like yourself. Yeah. So what would be the specific question on that? Like what type of advice um, just on creating products or what do you think? I would say, what is the best way? I mean, I have so many questions here. Uh, yeah. Here. I mean, how do you get your products in so many stores nationally? I mean, that's a okay. very we can We can start there. How do you get your products into so many stores nationally? Well, you start by creating something that's relevant. Okay. If I go in and I say, I'm going to have another laundry detergent. 
Well, don't you know that the aisles are full of laundry detergent? So you better be pretty different. You better have something unique to bring to the table. Now, if I have the first laundry detergent that you use, you know, one tenth of every other laundry detergent, it does a way better job than everything else. And it's got a cool brand. I'm like, okay, maybe I'm interested if I'm a retail buyer. But if you go in with another liquid laundry detergent, like why would I displace Tide and give you that that place? I learned very early on from these retail buyers. They're tough, man. You go in and they say, look, man, you think I have empty shelves over here? My stores are, are full. Every shelf is full. So like, I need you to tell me why I should displace a product that sells and put your product on the shelf. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to think about is what is going to convince that person a lot of times it's a data story, okay? If I go in and I say, uh, hey, Mr. Buyer Jason of Trader Joe's, won't you carry my product? And you say, no way, man, I'm good. I'm, my shelves are full. Uh, okay, well, guess what? I see this other brand on the shelf. Here's a data story from all these other stores. We outsell them three to one. Will you give us a shot? Okay, yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah, sure. And so that's what's been helpful for us is walking in and saying, hey, look, here's what's different about our product. Here's, here's why you don't have something like this right now. And here's why you should take it because it makes financial sense for your business. Okay. I, and if it doesn't work, I'll, I'll, I'll give you your money back. How about that? Okay. So it's always been kind of this like money back guarantee with these retailers and the product always sells. So that's what's been at the core, like the retail success and the momentum to get additional distribution points. Got it. So how do you get, how does one get themselves in a position to say, okay, I'm sitting in the kitchen. I have this awesome idea for a product. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm trying to put the audience through the feeling of what you went through personally. Yeah. Oh, I have yeah. this great idea. How do I, what are the ingredients? A, how do I put this together? B, how do I find a factory <laughs> to put these things, then find labels, mm -hmm. then have the cojones, which means balls in Spanish, <laughs> to say, okay, I'm going to go out. Oh, wait, I need a team here. Give, I know I'm, I'm, I'm asking yeah. a lot, but you know, in your own witty, iconic way, Billy, what, 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 what's that? What do you tell those people? What, what, like, what do you do? The first thing to remember is everybody's got excellent ideas, amazing ideas for a dime a dozen. Okay. People that I talk to, and I was like this, you've been like this, we've all been like this are way too protective of their ideas, okay? Unless you have something you're going to patent that's going to change the world and you can get it to market in five years because you only have 50, 20 years on a patent, you got to move fast. Like, okay, keep it secret. But generally speaking, no one else is as passionate about your idea as you are. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big proponent of sharing your ideas and getting it out there to see what people <laughs> think because chances are most people don't think your idea is great. And so you start with that idea I float it out there whenever I have a, a new idea for something. I get feedback, get feedback, get feedback, iterate, iterate, iterate. And then I say, okay, what is the market opportunity for this? Just because I have a great idea that's different than what's out there doesn't mean I can make a business out of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I'm going to make a business out of this, I need to think through where would I make this? What are my margins after I make it? So factoring the cost of goods, how much money can I make on this? How much startup capital is it going to take? Because guess what? You may have a great idea, market opportunity check, profit check, great margin. Yep. It's going to take a million dollars to run. If you run a liquid in this bottle and you run three flavors, cough up a million bucks out of the gate. Okay, That's how much a production run costs on this type of equipment because the production minimums are so high. So if that's the case, you need a million dollars to start, not, not counting marketing. So really kind of like understanding the financials you know, at a high level behind the economics of your product and this potential business idea is really critical in filtering through what ideas you could potentially bring out to the marketplace. Wow. And yeah, mind you, Billy just gave us an amazing answer. And of course, if you're like me, you're like, Oh, I want to know more. How do I, <laughs> of course, I got to ask you, did you have investors? Yes. When I started, I actually bootstrapped initially, right? So I went out and said, I'm going to start this business. I'm going to put my own money in. I put in uh, $60,000 and then, okay, I need, I need more money. So I went out and pitched in business plan competitions. A lot of people don't realize these things are out there. Uh, New Orleans has been a hotbed of these things for quite some time. So I went and did this pitch circuit and won about $250,000 and no strength attached capital and services. 
uh, that, that really helps seed fund the business. And then I went out and you can do these low interest loan programs through, through the SBA or local institutions. Uh, there's one in New Orleans we worked with. And, you know, I pulled out $250,000 that I personally guaranteed, which means if you don't pay that back, that with the business, the money, you're, you're personally liable for that. Okay. But I knew I could make the money back. So I put that on the line, paid it back in a few years. And after that point, I realized, okay, if we're really going to grow at a, at a nice, a nice pace here, I'm probably going to have to raise the money. So I went out and did like an angel round, a seed round, a series A, series B. Uh, and so there's been quite a bit of fundraising for this business. But it's, I don't I don't encourage that. There's a lot of hype around fundraising and a lot of excitement around it. I think the smart play is to find a way to run your business profitably from the start. And then if you want to raise money, then you have the leverage to raise money on company friendly terms. <laughs> oh yeah. But I can guarantee you, even this is the first time you and I are truly having a conversation that you have a heavy background mentally, right? Mm -hmm. Through experience of, like you said, business. And I reassure you, I won't put money on it, but I'm pretty positive your parents come from a business background or maybe your grandpa, right? Am I right when I say yep. this? You are, you are, you're right. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and I say this to you out of respect because there's people even like me, I, my parents, used to sell used cars, right? Yeah. And my mom was able to retire at the age of 35. Just think wow. about this, right? Wow. When yeah. people say, where do you get your hustle from? Get it from there my mom. Go. Get it from <laughs> my mama, right? But I didn't have much of a business sense that I had to learn. There's a difference between being a, a salesperson, right? And that, a great yeah. personality and then having the business mindset, which you have. And this yeah. is something that I've developed, right? Yeah. When yeah. people ask me, hey, um, I have friends that are currently on TV uh, on a weekly basis. Jason, how'd you get that endorsement deal? Hey, how do, you, how do you do, how do you get so much, but I have more followers than you? I'm like, it's not about the followers, right? Iconic, yeah. drink Iconic on IG, go follow them now, by the way. <laughs> it doesn't have a shitload of followers, part of my friends. Right. Yeah. But they got a tribe and that tribe yeah. grows, grows, grows. Right. And that's yeah. what I'm all about. So when people ask me, oh, well, this and that, you got it. When you're good at something kind of like you were good at it, that's why you're successful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 I've been talking to a few entrepreneurs like yourself because I've had not a lot, but I say a good couple hundred uh, entrepreneurs that want to learn from people like you and I. So yeah. maybe holding masterminds where people can attend and check us out and, and kind of go deeper because I yeah. want to ask more fun questions, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, for the business people. And, and I want to keep that, uh, that book open for the audience yeah. and you, uh, because this is something that people are yearning to learn. You know, yeah, I, yeah, and I think if you can find the right, you know, mastermind type of setup, and for those that are new to that term, I mean, it's, it's one floating around out there, it's becoming more popular. Uh, essentially, you go, you know, for a day, a couple of days, a weekend, and you just learn a lot, right? There's different speakers on different topics, you're there, you're networking, you're learning things. I really think it's the modern day college course, right? Because I look at what I learned in college, love where I went to school, went to LSU, go Tigers in Louisiana. Um, but there's not a lot, unfortunately, of what I learned in school that I apply in my business, right? There's some fundamentals of accounting and things like that that are helpful, but I think there's, there's room for innovation in, you know, the college course system and also for people that like, just want to go try out starting a business. I mean, like the, the economy is built on entrepreneurship in the U S so it's yeah. like, why are we not encouraging this more? Why are we not teaching people how to do this? You're not going to learn this typically in a college course, you, you learn from people that are doers that are already out there running businesses. Yeah. It's the, it's what I call, and, and you know, the definition mirroring, right? Yeah. Who are yeah. you mirroring? Who are, who's out there that you admire, right? Yeah. I have people in my vision board that I admire. I think I, I always get, I blush when 
I get people sending me screenshots of my photo on their vision board. I want to be mm-hmm. Jason. I'm like, Oh, that's wow. Whoa. Oh, yeah. The big deal. That's like, Hey, yeah. <laughs> you know? so, so I'm like, damn, that's pretty cool. Um, before we end the topic on that, because I want to ask more about your fun personal life and we only have a few minutes left. Yeah. Um, would you say you spend a lot of, do, oh, first off, let me rephrase this. Do you spend any money on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok ads? We do. You know, we, we spend money on digital ads. We have a whole bucket of, of marketing dollars that we say, okay, we need to drive awareness on our brand. Uh-huh. And in order to do that digitally, where we can find people all over the U.S., uh, of a certain age, you know, a certain zip code, wherever they may be, like it's important to do digital ads. The challenge is with the changing algorithms, the Facebook and Instagram ad performance has gone way down. Most people are aware of that. So it's been more things like, okay, how can we get creative and in, in our ad creation, our content creation there, uh, but also doing some Google ads, uh, you know, Amazon are running ads, places like that. Uh, but a lot of it's like, it's word of mouth. It's getting people to like, we say liquid to lips, right? We got to get people to try the product. So it's different ways like, Hey, order a free sample pack, just pay the shipping or something along those lines. Like find a way to get the samples in people's hands and they'll come back and buy it. That's okay. how confident we are on the product. Got it. And you do not yeah. pay any influencers, right? And you better say no. <laughs> no, of course not. No, look, we're, we're still a small brand with a small budget. So it's like, it's not, you talk to some of these people and they want big buckets of money and stuff. And I'm like, look, man, we have enough people endorsing our product out there. So it's like, it's more like, let's focus on organic, uh, just like conversations around our product and organic testimonials. Totally. Do you have an ambassador uh, affiliate program for people? And mind you, I've never asked because I just honestly, to me, it's not even about that. I, yeah. in other words, do you just give influencers product and they just post about it or do you give them a back end by, for them promoting it? Yeah. I mean, it just depends. Like some people say, Hey, look, I just want to try products and tell people about them. Some people say, Hey, I want you to pay me for anything. I don't care what it is. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it. If you pay me, those are not our people. Uh, and then there are people that say, Hey, look, like I'm running a personal brand business and this is what I do. My Instagram or Facebook's my living, TikTok, whatever. Then, okay, cool you try the product and we can touch you up as an affiliate of the business. And for those are the, that are not affiliate or familiar with this term, it's like essentially like they tell you about the product, they give you a discount code to use. And then the brand pays them a percentage uh, as well for sharing that with the, with the person. And look guys, brands usually lose money, almost always lose money on the first round of this, but if they're confident in their product, you're going to try the product. You're going to come back and buy it again. So yeah. the brand makes the money on the back end and it's a value for the consumer because you learn about a new product. Absolutely. That while we're on this, because now my audience is curious and I, yeah. again, I don't need anything from you. Um, what let's, let's give the audience something fun here. What is it? Caliente. What, how much of a discount do you want to give them when they go to Amazon or maybe your website, drinkiconic.com? God, I should be your spokesperson. <laughs> no. hey! Caliente. <laughs> Caliente. Vamos. Yeah. Feel iconic, feel iconic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's use, uh, we'll create a promo code Caliente, okay? Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, Caliente gets you 15% off. 15% off, all right, you heard it mm-hmm. here first. Yeah. Now, yeah. what does Billy do for fun? Let's talk about it. We only have a couple minutes left. What is yeah. like your go-to, like, because I work my butt off every day, sometimes 16-hour mm-hmm. days. So if me, you know yeah. me and me, sorry, if you were by yourself, what do you do for fun? If me and you were to go kick it, what, what, what is fun to you? Okay. So if I'm on my own and a lot of times, you know, I, I live by myself. So it's like, you know, okay, what am I going to do this weekend now that I'm done with work? It's always going to be self-care. I start and like, it sounds crazy to some people, but I go to the gym. My gym in uh, Miami, yeah. I go there. You know, there, there's a sauna, there's a steam room, there's a cold plunge, there's a jacuzzi, there's weights, there's like a good tribe of people there. I just, I enjoy it. I go, I can relax, catch up with people, do that. I, I could go spend three hours there, right? And then I'm going to go have some some delicious food, right? I'm going to have like a grass-fed steak or some smoothies or acai bowls or something like that. Uh, just like have a nice, proper, big meal after working out. And then I like learning, man. I'm kind of a nerd like that. So it's like, if I can go to a museum or I can go read something or listen to an audio book. Uh, and then lastly, it's like anything outdoors. I'm super active. So it's like, like I love to go like wake surfing or go to the beach or uh, go hiking or anything like that. So 
a second part of your question is what, we, what would we do? Something active, man. I come down to Arizona, we're going hiking, dude. Maybe, oh, yeah. maybe not, maybe not peak noon and summertime when you're Hell sweating no. your face off, right? Early. We're going to go in the afternoon or morning. Yeah. We'll go hiking. Yeah. We'll get into some biohacking stuff, right? We'll do some cold plunges. Yeah. Uh, find some, some, I'm always interested in trying uh, things like that. Like right now, I'm hosting my family in Austin next weekend. And it's my mom's birthday, and uh, I'm actually figuring out how we can get treatment for NAD plus at the house, so they have the NAD injections that like are anti aging, supporting, and things like that. But like that's what I like to do, dude. That see that to me is super fun. If you would ask me when I was a fat ass twenty years ago, I would have been like, "Wait, Billy, we ain't gonna go to Mickey D's? Wait, <laughs> wait Billy, we ain't gonna play a little basketball on PS2? Like, yeah, like don't yeah. leave me out like that." But I think with anything, correct me if I'm wrong, who you are now isn't the person that you were 10 years ago or 20 years ago, right? How old are you, by the way? Yeah, 39. Yeah. 39. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is younger than me and he's balling. Single, divorced, (laughs) kids, what's the deal? Single, man. Single, ready to mingle. By choice or just selective? I would say selective for me. It's like, a wait, look, a, I think it's great to, to partner up with someone later in life. I'm open to partnership and building a life with someone, having kids, definitely want kids. But for me, it's like, I want to figure out who I want to figure out who I can partner with that is aligned on core values, right? That when I say, Hey, let's go to the gym this weekend, or let's go hiking, or let's go whitewater rafting or something like that. They're like, that sounds awesome. Not like, Oh, really want to go i don't like working out let's just sit at home and like order fast food like that kills me too by the way i always see these uber people walking up with mcdonald's like okay like it's not easy enough to go to mcdonald's you need an uber to bring you mcdonald's i'm just like baffled by this like the uber costs more than the food anyway I, um so yeah you know I'm sorry i just want to add before this cuts off i yeah literally how you're thinking is exactly how i thought a few years ago what i learned in the process and i do also a lot of relationship coaching with clients mm-hmm is that sometimes you may meet someone that loves you as much as you love them, right? And you may have a lot of commonalities, but they may not like, my girlfriend doesn't like to work out as much as I do. I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah. But what I learned is you can still be in a relationship with someone that you can say you want to spend your life with them. And then all the other things that you just mentioned that I love, that say your your, your potential girlfriend or whatever doesn't like, that's what friends are for. <laughs> yeah. Right? No, that's a great point. Yeah. Your partner. A lot, of, a lot of people think that. They think like, oh, I got to find my soulmate. They have to be aligned on 100% of activities. I don't want that. I don't want to be connected to the hips of someone. I like my freedom. I want to hang out with my friends. And you're right, man. That's what yes. friends are for. Yes, yes, yes. So let's do this, man. Obviously, I'm going to actually hit you up after this real quick to say thank you. But I want to thank the audience for being so plugged in and tuned in to Billy Bosch, because not only does he serve as an inspiration, a motivation, but someone to truly get you mentally, emotionally, and physically through your health in the best shape ever. Billy, thank you for being you and having you on the show today, man. It's been an honor. Thank you for having me, my man. For sure. We'll see you soon. Yeah, Jason, you know it, man. Let's do it again. All right, everybody, get inspired, stay inspired. Please follow Billy at drink iconic on instagram facebook twitter the list goes on stay tuned for caliente 15 coupons coming soon we'll see you guys make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer and don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases if you enjoyed this video give it a like and feel free to leave your comments i'm jason roselle and you're watching get inspired with jason